couple of late autumn sessions at Whitstable. This time I'm fishing the noted area called the street. This is a natural spit-like feature which is only revealed at low water and runs for about three quarters of a mile. It has a north-south orientation and is at the western end of Tankerton Bay, right in front of Tower Hill. You can get to it from the Beechwalk car park near Whitstable Harbour, but I've opted to park down one of the side roads off Tower Hill and Marine Parade. So that involved walking along the path, down the hill and through those beach huts which are directly behind me. For this first session, I'm fishing two bays to the right of the street, which is past the second groin in this view. Panning round Tower Hill and the beach huts, I'll zoom in to the end of that path you take to where I've parked. I've arrived a bit late, right at the top of the tide, so I'm only going to be fishing for a few hours. I've got my usual setup, two Colmix 07 rods with Pen Affinity 7000s and £20 braid. At the business end, I've got a free hook clip down rig and a free short wire boom rig. I'm hopeful of catching flatfish, but last time I fished Whitstable, it was just scaldy bass. The lugworm on both rigs has gone out and I'm eagerly awaiting my first bite. At many venues the top of the tide is usually a dead period and I'm not expecting anything to happen until about half an hour going down. Having said that, that looked like a little knock and I wind in to see if there's anything there. While I do that, I cover the locational setting. In my previous Whitstable video I gave the regional setting. We're on the North Kent coast facing the North Sea, east of the Isle of Sheppey and the Thames Estuary. Sea Salter is to the west and Hearn Bay to the east. Long Rock separates Whitstable from the Hampton Bay area and the harbour separates West Beach from Tankerton Bay. The street is clearly visible in Google Earth, projecting from Tower Hill. The location of my previous video, Tankerton Slopes, is to the east. This part of the map shows the base fished for these two sessions in this video. Well, if I did have anything on, it came off close in. Something took a liking to lugworm since fresh bait is needed for all three snuds. To get some distance on the cast, I'm clipping down the rig. Power casting is not needed with these rods, and I've got the wind from behind, which also helps. The bait on the boom rigs have been completely stripped off, so I think that's down to crabs.
strike into another little knock, but this time it feels like there's a fish on. Found on a boom rig. Not big, but at least I've caught a flatfish from this venue. Now this is something bigger and it's kited to my right. Unfortunately, I feel it come off. Next cast in roughly the same spot, deja vu. The fish has kited to the right again and it's the other side of that groin. Well, it didn't feel as big as the one I've just lost, but never mind, this will do. A bit better than the schoolies I had last time I fished Bitstable. I lost another decent bass, but then things went a bit quiet. Since I had got here late, I decided to stay and fish the ebb right the way down until the street started to reappear. I've had another small knock, so I'm holding rod, ready to pounce if it goes again. I'm moving it, dragging it a little bit, just to try and induce a proper take. Nothing happened on cue, but since I put the rod down, as often happens, the tip went again. And I think I'm into something. I'm pleased that's another flat fish. Again, it's only small. But this time, I'm chuffed to find that it's a place. Not a hectic session, and I was a little disappointed that I did lose two big fish, which I think were bass, but nevertheless, I'm fairly pleased with catching two flat fish. I decided to come back two days later and try the left side of the street. Conditions were completely different and I was greeted by a fairly stiff breeze straight into my face and the water is very coloured. Last time it was the opposite, wind from behind and very clear water. The clip down rig with Lugram has already been cast out 
and before I could set up the second rod, I get my first bite. Well, I was wondering if they were going to make an appearance. My first whiting. Not really surprising since the water is very coloured. As I'm setting up a second rod, a few drops of rain are adding to the unpleasantness of a cold northerly wind. I've kept my boom rig from last time, still attached the star lead in a small plastic freezer bag, so it's quick to attach this and be ready to go. but I'm interrupted by another bite on the rod that's already out there. The crab falls off from the bottom snud, but there's a whiting attached to the top.
I'll rebait and clip up this rig, but have the other one ready before I cast it out. The boom rig has size 3 Nordic bent hooks, so I'm looking for smaller lug room to put onto these. Another look at the rigs, they're the same as I used last time, only I've got a breakaway impact continental lead on the free hook clip down rig, rather than the flat lead I had before, since I think it's going to be more of a tidal pull. Although the wind seems to be dying down a bit, I'm having to punch the lead out into that wind, so to help me, I'm using a finger stool. I'm still hopeful of catching flatfish, but with today's conditions, it's more likely to end up being a whiting fest. If I do get played with whiting out at distance, then I'll be dropping my baits fairly short in to try and avoid them. Knocks on both rods, but this time I wait for something a bit more positive before I strike.
double shot of whiting on a boom rig and another bite immediately after recasting. Bites on both rods, but I don't seem to be connecting with them. I've given myself a lot more time to fish today, and it's now approaching the top of the tide. I've now cast the boom rig in quite close. A couple of tiny knocks give me false hope of a flatfish. Unfortunately, it's just two more whiting hanging on, so they're in close as well. Casting this rig just to the end of that groin. The tide has turned, so it's ebbing, and now the onslaught of whiting begins.
Casting close in doesn't seem to make any difference. I just hope it's not going to be all whiting. I am hoping for something different. Regular double and triple shots now. Hurrah, something different. A scaldy bess on the bottom hook. But there's no sign of those bigger ones that were about two days ago. Well, it's certainly busy, if not that exciting. No time now to rebait a second rod.
carried on to try and catch something different, but just got one more of those scaldy bass, as well as lots more of those whiting. So a much busier day this time than before, I ended up with 51 whiting and two little bass. It just shows how much difference conditions make. If the water's rough and coloured this time of year, it just seems that it's the whiting that seem to get to your bait before anything else can. I will be back though in calmer conditions to see if I can catch any dabs. Before I go, I'd just like to thank everyone who subscribed to this channel. I'm very grateful that we've now reached a milestone of 3,000 subscribers. To mark this occasion, I'm now switching focus to raising money for the Stroke Association. Please keep watching, since every view counts towards this.